Hey, what's up, Rafers? I'm Rafer Matt, and this week I have an awesome video for you. Today we're going to talk about Mont's boar coral and how to take care of them. Stay tuned. Hey there, Rafers. Today we're going to talk about Matsapora coral. As you can see, this tank has a few of them in it, and it started off as Matsapora dominant when I first started it. About four years ago, I wanted to try SPS corals, so I did some research and I found that Matsapora were the way to go. Uh, I also got that green slime of Acapora, and I uh, went to a frag swap and bought a bunch of coral, and I had like 50 50 results as far as success. As you can see, Matsapora lend color and texture to your tank. I highly recommend them to people looking to start in SPS coral. As you can see here, Matsapora are encrusting corals, so care must be taken with coral placement so that they do not grow over other corals. Do note, however, that Matsapora are not very territorial, so they may lose a fight against an Acropora or Leptoceras, for example. In general, if the polyps are out, such as the coral here, then they're happy in the flow that they're in. If the polyps are receded, then the flow may be too high. If you have any fish or invertebrates that like to move sand around, it's important to uncover any Matsapora that get covered in sand, as it'll kill the coral in those areas that it's covered in. This Matsapora is next to a gyre, so you can see that the polyps are not extended as much as they should be. While Matsapora do enjoy higher flow, it's important not to put them directly next to a power head as that'll cause tissue loss. Finding that sweet spot in flow can be a little tricky, but eventually you'll get there if you're patient. As you can see with this Matsapora setosa, Matsapora grow in different forms. There's just flat ones that encrust on the rocks, there's plating types, and there's also ones that grow like this that are like stalagmites in a cave. Personally, this Satosa is my favorite. It may take a little time to establish, but once it does, it rewards you with an awesome texture in your reef. And depending on how high your par is, the Satosa can change to a darker or lighter color, and sometimes there's even a whole different color shift as well. These Monopora colors are muted. The one on the left is called Crazy Tea, and the one on the right is Beach Bum. However, looking at them now, you wouldn't think those are those corals. But they actually are. If I were to put these in higher par and higher flow, they would color up to what you would recognize. I think I'm going to put these two in my new frag tank. That way I can color them up and monitor more closely rather than having them in my display tank. And if you have Matsapora that have shifted colors like this, I wouldn't worry too much. As long as the polyps are out and they seem like they're happy, they should be okay. And you can always color them up over time. I suggest making slow changes gradually over the course of a few months. That way you don't shock the coral and you don't have any tissue loss. All right, let's talk about some parameters. You want to try to keep your alkalinity between 8 and 12 dKH. However, I usually run my tanks around 8.5. Uh, calcium, you want to keep it around 400 to 500. Uh, I usually keep it around 450. And magnesium, I like to keep around 1350 to 1400. I usually run it around 1375. For phosphates, I like to keep them around 0.04 to 0.08 ppm. And nitrates, you can have a little bit wider range. Um, I suggest a range anywhere from 5 to 20. Uh, a little bit wider than Acropora, you don't have to go as tight. But uh, they should be happy in any range around there. For specific gravity, try to keep it around seawater levels, around 1.024 to 1.026. And for par, I like anywhere from 100 to 300. And for acclimation, I suggest putting them lower in the tank and lower par. Unless you can match the part of the tank that came out of right away, I suggest starting there and gradually bumping it up. Please note that these are my suggestions for parameters, and your results may vary. And as you can see here, some Matsapora like to grow over other Matsapora, so sometimes it creates like a little unique mess. Uh, this thing looks pretty cool, but I think I might have to trim it back because it's blocking some flow. However, the fish seem to like it. 
Another thing that I noticed out of this is that my Montipora setosa is getting some grafting from this monocap. So it's actually getting some green stripes on it, and that's pretty cool. If you're looking to get an SBS coral, I highly suggest Montipora. They come in a wide range of color and growth forms, and they're easier to care for compared to other SBS coral. Well, that'll do it for this week's video. If you have Montipora coral, let me know in the comments below how you take care of them. I'm Reefer Matt. Thank you for watching, and happy reefing.